Hey guys, Scott here, and I will be reviewing Alien, bef starring Tom Skerritt, Sigourney Weaver, John Hurt, Veronica Cartwright, Harry Dean Stanton, and Ian Holm, directed by Ridley Scott. Funny how he has the same name as me, but except that's his last name. Now, before we get into the movie, I just want to say I'm a pretty big Alien fan, and much more than the AVP movies, which the first one, me, me, a big fan of that series, which... I shall wear that badge forever, and I'll talk about that one as well as the original, and then I'll get to AVP, and then I'll get to the maybe kind of prequel Prometheus, leading up to the to this movie, for example. Coming out in May of this year. Now, let's talk about a very brief plot synopsis. The sentient computer on board the commercial towing vehicle, the Nostromo, currently hauling massive outer space oral finery back to Earth, detects a cryptic radio signal originating from an unexpected planet and awakening her, their human crew from a cryogenic hibernation to investigate the seven grisly blue collar types who land on a stormy surface of the New World and send out a co-ed search party that traces transmission back to an elephantine alien carcass. Fossilized at the helm of a crashed horseshoe-shaped starship, Warren Officer Ripley decodes the signal as a warning to stay away from an arbor that holds leathery eggs but is unable to inform Executive Officer Kane before one hatches in Parasite that launches that latches on his face. Science Officer Ash breaks quarantine laws to operate on Kane back under ship's infirmary, but the facehugger bleeds acid when cut and strangles its victim if any attempt is made to pry it off. Eventually, the spidery beast detaches it on its own and crawls off to die alone, Kane regains consciousness with no memory of the incident. And the merry crew sits down for one last meal before running to their cry tubes. As it turns out, the parasite laid an egg in Kane's lungs. Da da da! While feeding him his oxygen. And the movie's most iconic moment a wormy alien baby bursts out of Kane's chest cavity. Poor bastard. Darts across the dining room table and disappears into a dark labyrinth and a stroma. The tiny creature quickly evolves into a man sized biopet. But a uh, dark black skin, scorpion tail, and an eyeless mated head that looks like it's not at all together bears two sets of silver fangs and crew members are taken out one by one as they attempt to drive an alien into airlock using flamethrowers and crew weaponry. Ripley gains command after Captain Dallas's ambush into the vents and discovers that Ash and the ship's computer are conspiring to bring the alien back alive. Crew expendable. Ash physically assaults Ripley into nearly her death before burly engineer Parker comes to the rescue and literally knocks Ash's body off, thus exposing the science officer to be a robot. Position increased amongst the humans by corporate policy is enforced no longer feeling so loyal to a company such a humane practice. Ripley decides to blow up the oil refinery and take her escape pod with the other survivors who turn out to be an orange tabby cat named Jones and the alien itself, which stowed away from a tiny ship's camouflaging pipes and hoses while Ripley was punching in the detonation code in space. No one can hear you scream, but they can see your underwear as the defenseless woman straps herself to the chair, opens the airlock, and generally prompts to her harpoon gun and blasted the ship's thrusters. 
spells the alien into deep space. Ripley reflects on her odds for a quick rescue and the final ship's blog before settling down to a restful, quiet nap with her cat as credits roll. So let me start off with one thing that I don't know if anybody can help at this point because it was in the late 70s. The 20th Century Fox logo in the beginning of the movie as it starts is sounds on my disc a little bit too scratchy, but hey, what are you going to do? It's the 70s, and it's almost to the 80s at this point, so I'm not going to complain about that. I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but I'm going to talk about first what I liked about the movie. The opening sequence was dead silent. I love this part where we get to, when we get to people eating, that was like when we go on space and then the, it takes slow time for the title to come up. And then as the end of the directed by Ridley Scott thing comes up and it shows Alien on top of the screen, that was a good move right there, Ridley. Great job on that. And the way it opened with the silence was golden for me, in my opinion. That's one way that you'll know that you're going into a scary movie at this point. Because this is supposed to be the scary one. The next one's supposed to be an action movie for sure, which I'll get to next week. When three crew members on the ship go in the area with the eggs of the face huggers, and when John Hurt opens one of the eggs, and the next thing you know, jumps out and scares the crap out of not just me, but the audience of that time as well, by going, um, like when he opens the egg and it goes, Boo! I got scared because it jumped out of a random time and gave me the willies, like, Ooh, to this day. And that moment was awesome. I mean... Really, just awesome. When John Hurt gets killed by the chestburster, which, poor bastard, because he died recently, as I recall. So when the alien um, gets its chestburster out of John Hurt, and as it roars and runs away from the dining table, that was hilarious. I was busting up laughing. And then two minutes later... They put John Hurt's body in an escape pod, and and then they ship it out in space, making me think the ship was going to take a poop at the time. That was absolutely hilarious as well. I, I can't help about thinking about how sickening but really hilarious those two scenes were, as well as the time when, when the guy's looking for Jones, and, and then the first thing he goes is, Here, kitty. Yeah, kitty, kitty. And as he finds him, one of the crewmates of Least um, will go finding the cat. And then the next thing you know, it goes, Wee-ew! and then starts running away. And fun fact, while filming this scene, the cat was actually hissing at the xenomorph in the scene in the movie. But, a.k.a. the alien. But, here's the truth. The cat was hissing at a dog. A German Shepherd, to be clear. Which made me think he's being a little bastard. This is a minor point, anyways. But the scene where Captain Dallas goes in the tunnel. And it turns out there was an alien right behind him. Which, the funny thing about that was... Finding Dory from last year made that reference. But in a different kind of way. The difference is... That one was m more scarier and more realistic in this movie. Whereas Finding Dory was kind of making that reference into a joke, which that's what kids' movies do these days. And I'm not going to complain about that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. But this one's a little bit more convincing, in my opinion. The fight scene between Ash and Ripley was a brutal scene to watch. Just absolutely brutal. The way he's throwing her and he's putting his fist in her mouth. Just, ugh. I can't, I can't think about how painful that can be, to be clear. And it's, it's just really freaking painful. The last fight scene between Ripley and the alien was a fantastic but very short scene. But I'm not going to complain about that because it was supposed to be that short after she escapes with the escape pod. And the next thing you know, she finds an alien. Like, and it goes, ah! That kind of thing. But I will complain about this point is a couple of performances and a couple of things that bug me. I'll start with the things that bug me the most. First of all... In the beginning of the movie where people are smoking as they're eating, won't they make the food taste and smell as bad as smoking is the thing? If The thing is, 
If you're an astronaut and you're smoking on the ship, don't you think people do not want to breathe without smelling cigarettes? Christ sakes, just don't smoke on the freaking ship in the first place. Seriously. Ugh. Just don't smoke in a spaceship or rocket because there's no way in hell that they can get the smell out of the ship. That would be one of the problems I have with this movie. Another problem I have with the film is, oh my god, this is going to really kill me by the end of the film. But, um, the scene where Ripley is making the ship explode in ten minutes, and then the next thing he she notices is, where's Jones? Where's the cat? It's like, you know what, I don't think NASA would approve of this either, because you can't bring your pets in a spaceship. Or a rocket. None of it. You can't just bring the damn cat in the middle of the freaking ship. Don't bring it in the ship. Damn. It's just, it annoys me when people have to bring a dog or a cat in the middle of this freaking spaceship report. You know what I mean? Just, God damn. Anyways, back to the minor points. Um... I thought that Ian Holmes' character was a little annoying because he keeps disobeying the protagonist of the movie, which, hey, that's that's maybe part of the character, but I still don't like his performance. And the other annoying character, and this is the one I'm going to keep hating on, is Veronica Cartwright's character. She screams to go way over the frickin' top. Just She slaps our protagonist in the director's cut. It's like, my God, do you really need to be that frickin' stupid? I, are you serious about this? Just, no, I'm not going to approve of this. No, I don't approve of you. Get off my crew for all I care. Now, it's time to rate the movie. I'd give it at, um, let me think, uh, an 8.7 out of 10. It is scary as hell. It's one of the best sci-fi slash horror movies I've seen in all time. Believe it or not, there was another movie that came out recently where they where this movie was the inspiration of getting this movie made in the first place. And the movie is... That's right, folks. The director of Life made this move, made um, the, that movie because of this movie. Now, before I even go, I had to say something that I thought I realized I missed in Trainspotting 2 earlier yesterday or today. I sent in Trainspotting 2 of which movies and series I'll be discussing, but the one thing I keep forgetting about is I was going to bring up a couple of directors who I'm a pretty big fan of because of their movies, and I should tell you, and I'm only thinking of a couple for now, and I'll be watching the director's other films before we get to these two movies, and those two are, let's take a look, shall we? So yes, I am reviewing Edgar Wright's all Shaun of the Dead all the way to Baby Driver and Christopher Nolan's following all the way to Dunkirk. So, um, as well as the Justice League that I'll be doing in October or November before that Justice League movie comes out. But until then, um, I'll be here next week with Aliens, the review. So... Until next time, don't get scared out of your willies.